I am super excited to invite you on to the show this lovely morning. We're recording on a Thursday. A um, balmy so seven first, degrees here. Oh my God. I woke it's up and I was like, warmer no. there. Yeah, it's so cold. <laughs> We are recording in the winter, y'all. Um, it's so cold. Yeah, it, it felt like 10 by me. So it felt like seven by you. We're, we're going to heat things up today, though. We're well, going to talk about... Do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to heat it up. We're going to talk yeah. about really intriguing concepts uh, about Web3, NFTs, maybe a little crypto, like just as a little preview to get uh for our audience excited but before we do um data first and foremost welcome i thank you you're welcome and thank you for coming seriously i'm very excited to connect and just nerd out a little today um, yes before we get into it i would love for you to just Tell us all a little bit about your background and just like how you ended up so involved with the metaverse and Web3 in the first place. I would love to. So I spent the first 10 plus years of my career in New York, um, always kind of on the advertising and digital media side of the business. And I about eight years ago now um, was one of the first employees at PureWow, which is you're not familiar, one of the larger women's lifestyle um, digital media companies on the sales side of the business. And again, it was very early stage. I think there was like eight employees and stayed there for about seven years. We went through a successful acquisition in 2018 by Gary Vaynerchuk and launched Gallery Media Group and then a series of other digital media brands under that media company holding that media holding company. And by the end of my tenure, I was the VP of product and oversaw the design, product management, and cross-functional content production management teams. So I, we were responsible for everything you visually saw across all GMG brands and all of the systems and front-end products that powered that content machine. And it was the most amazing experience for so many reasons, but I always had the entrepreneurial bug. And I finally took the leap in 2019 to start my own business. Um, I started my own consulting business. We do brand strategy and development and digital media strategy for early stage startups for the most part. And the name of that's the day consulting. I have been doing that. I'm still doing that. It's taken a little bit of the back seat since I launched my newest business, um, Unblocked, which is I'll share the kind of why and how I why I started it, but we are a home for women to learn, connect, and capitalize on the emerging technologies like blockchain and NFTs, cryptocurrencies, and cultural shifts that are rewiring our world today. So how I got into this is I have always been a little bit of a tech nerd. My husband is an engineer by trade. He always dabbled a little bit in crypto. He was sitting in the rooms with a lot of the OG. Bitcoin and engineers are mining Bitcoin back in 2012, 13. But I like a lot of women was just like, Nick, I don't fucking care. Don't lose all our money. I don't understand. So it started by a fake person. Like, it's, what the fuck? Just please be careful. <laughs> and um, about a year ago, I will never forget where I was. We were driving up to my parents' lake house and I was reading a nerdy article on NFTs. It was before everything we're seeing in the space today, the people selling for 60 million, et cetera. And I looked over to my husband and I said, yo, if I'm understanding this NFT technology correctly, it's gonna change everything. We're gonna have the ability to append a unique identifier to any digital asset that is gonna give it proof of ownership and all these other superpowers. Like, have you heard about this? And by nature of my content background and working with a lot of, with my consulting businesses, I've worked with a lot of, um, I like to call them you know, influencers, but people, brands turned businesses. My brain went to the place of, hey, what's the modern day internet powered by? Content. Who powers most of that content? Individual contributors or creators. And sure, there's a handful of them that are making really good money and a lot of people that are making a living, but for the most part, 
from a monetization and ownership standpoint, they've kind of been getting screwed since the beginning of this, just given how the current internet monetizes, i.e. off of ads and data. So I said all this to him and he looked at me like I had 37 heads. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I don't even know if what I'm saying makes any sense at all. Um, and I proceeded to spend the next few months really diving deep learning about the underlying technology, blockchain technology, and got more and more excited about how this technology could really give the power back to creators and the power back to the people, not to sound so cliche, but in so many ways. And I'm, we'll get into that um, in more detail, I'm sure, as we chat more. But I also observed that history, for better or worse, was repeating itself yet again. and these new technologies and financial systems that were starting to transform our world and I believe will eventually be embedded from an infrastructure standpoint in every part of everyone's lives were being designed predominantly by men. And at that point, it was also like just disgusting. I've worked with engineers. I've worked in male dominated spaces, but this was to be real, like you were dealing with like 23 year old boys that probably have never gotten laid, sitting in their mom's basements that were being like mean, like we don't let girls allowed here. And I was like, wait a second, I'm in my in early to mid thirties. I'm in my mid thirties, but I, I'm right on the brink. So I still say both. Um, and I just was not down with that. You know, I have a business. I've always worked for female focused companies. I am a female entrepreneur. I live for supporting other women. And at the end of the day, we need as many voices as possible involved in building the future. Yes. And there's also a whole lot of money to be made, right? And so Unblocked was born. And again, our mission is really just to collectively bring as many women and non-binary people together to collaboratively learn together and No one knows what the future is going to look like with all this tech. We have the opportunity right now to be involved at the early stages and build these things from the ground up and applications and platforms and systems that will drive change for the future. And ultimately, if we can do it right, make us more money and really make things a bit more diverse from a digital ecosystem standpoint. So... That's, I think, everything in a nutshell. I more per- a little bit of personal stuff about me. I have a three-year-old at home. Um, we're in the Boston area now. We grew up, my husband and I both grew up here. I miss New York dearly every day. Thankfully, I get to go down a few times every few months. We are between here and the Hudson Valley area. And we have our a second baby on the way who's coming in May. So Aww, just trying to survive most days, you know, pregnancy. I've been joking and saying, if it could only be six months, I'd be golden. <laughs> the last <laughs> three are not for me. But they even yeah. got a fast track pregnancy to like know, keep, up with, you know, <laughs> keep up with that. <laughs> what an interesting background. I, I'm like fascinated. I think that it's, look, all this stuff, it's none of it is particularly new. You know, you're talking about 20, what, I mean, we're talking about years ago that some of these conversations were being had. However, there is this renewed buzz. There is this new like intrigue on a much larger scale. And I think that that in particular is, well, incredibly like important to talk about because you can have a great idea, a great concept, but if it doesn't get traction, if it doesn't get in front of people, you know, there's only so far that it can go, especially when it takes like literally a village. It takes all yeah. of the community for it to be successful in a variety of different ways. So I love the buzz. I'm so into it. I think it's incredible what you're building though with Unblock. Thank you. And I love as a women's owned organization, which is WIM, you know, I love that it's specifically tailored to attract an audience of, of female and, you know, non-binary creators. I would love to hear from you. What made you decide to focus on that community in particular? 
So a few things. One, when I say creator, I use it very, in a very wide sense. Artists, of course, influencers. I see myself as a creator. I think you're a creator. You know, like maybe you don't, again, paint, but you are creating businesses. You're creating relationships and connections. And so that's just to kind of qualify how we're talking about the term creator. At least I am through the lens of my business. But one of the things, my personal values and the things that I, I love most in this world is collaboration. It's one of the reasons that I am so grateful and loved my Pure Wow experience so much. It's why I love working with the right clients. I love building things with people simply because I think the best ideas and the best things are built. Again, when you have an idea, you share with me, we riff off it, we go back and forth, et cetera. So that's one reason that I'm trying to, I focus on creators because I think innately, there's so many partnerships that are already happening in this, you know, creator economy space, whether we look at brand partnerships or how a brand partners with an influencer, et cetera. Um, the other reason is this technology is the, the creators, right? They're the ones that are, let's not get it twisted. In a lot of ways, you take away the creator, bye bye Facebook. Bye bye Instagram. Bye bye Twitter. Bye bye YouTube. That's not okay. Their work not only is there are they not getting fully compensated for their proprietary piece of work, whether it's a photo or if we look at a Chloe Wade, a poem that she wrote, writes to put and post on Instagram. Someone like a Chloe Wade, she, her proprietary writing might be getting posted and reposted five hundred thousand times. She doesn't see a dollar for that. Of course. She uses it to build a community and an audience. And then when her book comes out, she can use that audience to leverage, to drive more sales. But I'm really interested in shifting those, that power structure because I, I don't think it's okay. I think there's a way to better treat, frankly, the people that are really driving the most value and providing the experience on these platforms that we all spend so much time and give so much attention to. And so I think that that is a major point of distinction and worth mentioning about like the ownership piece of this and like the exciting potential yeah. to like to monetize all of this in a very unique way. And I appreciate, like, so we just recently had someone on the show, we talked about like the basics of Web3 and mm -hmm. how it relates to the creator economy. I want to use this conversation with you to talk about it in like slightly more advanced terms. I want to know, like, I want, I want to hear from you about like the economics of it a little bit and like why creators or managers or, you know, they, of, of creators, like why they should be intrigued by this from an economic standpoint. I want to hear from you about that. Absolutely. So the creators, the tech underlying technology of all of this is essentially powered by a token economy. And that token, you can think about it as a coin, a heart, like it's not, it's obviously digital, but that token is trackable and it's ownable. And most importantly, in my opinion, it has this layer connected to it, which is called the smart contract. And that smart contract allows you, it's code, to program whatever metadata or programming parameters you as an individual think is best to make money to you know use your create whatever you're creating etc and so let's use an example that allows you to potentially tokenize your community so i am an influencer and i have 50,000 followers my followers are my community if you have if you're playing in this game and you are monetizing off of your IP, a digital class, your knowledge, a physical product, 
you, in my opinion, have only done it well because you have been authentic. You have spent the time to thoughtfully build a community and you're actually providing value to them and connecting with them. And then when you try to sell them something, they're actually converting because you've done those things prior. So what the token allows you to do is say, hey, community, I'm thinking about, I want to start, I'm going to start, I'm going to NFT, I'm going to make my digital course that I sell already on a Shopify storefront, I'm going to make it an NFT. That basically puts it on the blockchain, gives it proof of ownership, and allows you to say, I, this course is $19.99, and every time you watch this course or you put it on a secondary market, a resale market to sell that course, I am going to program it so I get 25% of royalties. So think about that. That one piece of content, not only are you getting now paid for the one $19.99 fee, you're also getting paid in perpetuity for that thing. So I use the example of an online course, but this could be a cooking class. It could be the PDF version of the book that you are publishing. And so that I think is one of the really big economic upsides is this idea that you can program in your own royalties and collect sales in perpetuity forever. And so, and so question for you on that, cause like, I don't know that you there, you know, there are e-learning platforms, right? Like there are already companies that like have a lot of stuff built in to be able to support the facilitation of that sort of a thing. So like you're saying that the value prop is because they own it and they can sort of like dictate the, the future of it. And a question for you is like, this is something that I've wondered. So influencers have their built-in community that they've worked really hard to cultivate on a variety of different social platforms. Is there additional discoverability of these people because they put it out there? So I think right now, just learn, immerse yourself in the conversations. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed. There is, this is literally the new internet and there's so many components and parts of it, even if we just look at NFTs isolated. So just start learning. And then I always say to people, the parts of it that jazz, that light you up. So for me, I get lit up, not by NFT art. I get lit up by NFTs that provide utility, i.e. an NFT that unlocks exclusive access or how an NFT could be leveraged to improve a digital experience with a relevant physical good. But that's just me. So So let's, yeah, so let's, let's dive into that because I agree. That excites me too. And I feel like that's like a very strong use case in the creator economy in particular. So let's talk about that. So utility. So like the ability to actually like, unlock something there's function to it it's not just like the nfts that a lot of us know which is art right it's not yeah. just like something visual it's not something that necessarily you're just collecting for collection's sake it has a functionality to it access i that is huge for anyone listening in terms of like what capabilities and the, and the strengths that this can allow creators to explore. So access and talk a little bit more about all that. I think that's really key here. Okay, perfect. So let's use an example. I'm blacking out Patreon and this is not a knock at Patreon. They're a phenomenal platform and I'm sure they're building a lot of stuff thinking this way, but I'm going to keep kind of going with influencer relevant experience uh, use cases. So I am a huge influencer. I have a million followers currently. I am using Patreon to create exclusive content. And then my users, I'm sending them there. They pay an additional fee to get that content so I can get paid a higher fee for this proprietary content. That is well and good. Patreon's built a phenomenal platform. But again, let's talk about control and maximizing how much money you make. Patreon is setting the parameters. They're telling you, 
exactly how the flow is going to go, exactly what the user experience is going to go, how you're bundling different types of offerings, whether it be pairing content with a product, with a meet and greet session or coffee session with you. A lot of, there's restrictions, right? And they are a business. They need to make money. So they are taking a cut of the money that you are bringing them as they need to, to make money. But what an NFT would do is give you full control over what this proprietary content looks like. And I'll, I'll walk through that in a second in a way that is best for you and your business. And why I love this is, in my opinion, the most successful creators, influencers, whatever, their business models all look slightly different, right? So you might be a Melissa Wood Health and you have classes you do and you have your app, you have merch, and you sometimes do live in-person classes. She started as an influencer. She simply is monetizing her brand based on who she is and what provides the most value to her audience. Whereas if you look at, you know, a cooking influencer, I can't think of anyone, or a chef, they have recipes, free content. They have launched a cookbook, a physical good, and they do live cooking classes once a month. Those are all revenue streams. Same, same, but different. But shouldn't they continue to have the flexibility to create monetizable products that are reverse engineered for their audience and slightly different with the most ease, not using a hundred different storefronts and a hundred different fragmented platforms, which is what's happening to create the best experience and make the most money. So one, that's what the NFT and the smart contract would allow them to do. Theoretically, those two examples, they say, you, I'm going to use an NFT. You can buy product one and it, I like to sometimes when I'm using NFTs in this example, call them, refer to them as an, a digital good, the actual JPEG version of it. So bundle one is you get Melissa Woods, an ex exclusive one and a half hour class with her for X price. You get the MP4 delivered to you, plus, you know, some art that's the JPEG that you own. Bundle two is that's that plus her merch. You might pay a higher cost. It's just like product bundles plus the digital receipt, i.e. that JPEG. It could be the same art. It could be different. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, no, entirely. I think that like here's I always want to foresee additional questions. Right? No, please. So, and I know this stuff is that, confusing. So that's why I please keep stopping. Well, me I, I, I feel like you've done a really good job explaining it, but most importantly, explaining the value prop. Yeah. I think that like what I am curious about, and I know that there's going to like, this is the sentiment, like, but how do I do all of this? Totally. Like, what, because like going to, you mentioned Kajabi, like going to a Kajabi, like that's part of their value prop is like, they make it easy and they sort of justify, they, that's what they would say. At least they justify the money that you pay them because they're setting it up, they're distributing it, like they're making it possible to do it. This is one thing that I am intrigued by though with Web3. There is so much opportunity yeah. to get people into it, to help facilitate that. Exactly. Um, however, like what would you say to anyone listening or, or watching on YouTube who they're intimidated by, the way, they're like, this sounds amazing, but like, how do I start? How do I do this? So I would, I would encourage you to keep just learning and observing and know that you shouldn't, I wouldn't recommend 99% of people go to Web3 in this way right now, but this is what the future is going to look like. So what I'm passionate about is, and to your point, we're building it right now, baby. Like, you don't have to be an engineer. You don't, by getting, there's so many ways to get involved. So like with Unblocked, for example, this is where I'm just looking to connect with anyone and everyone. And there's so many organizations back to this idea of collaboration where like you can add value to building the future just by sharing your experience if you're an influencer. 
whatever you have time for, but just learn right now. The technology is not there that I love talking about web one versus web two versus web three. And you probably heard this. Most people say web one was, is basically we were able to consume. We consumed text images. Web two was you were able to consume and create. And web three is we're able to consume, create, and own. So the example they used that I was obsessed with is back in web one days for anyone that might be a little older, if you went to, you know, MarthaStewart.com, it was literally the print magazine. It was text and images. There wasn't links. There like eventually was some links, but it was PDFs early on of that content. That's where we are right now. This technology, this is so fresh. So don't feel overwhelmed. Feel excited. I'll keep going with the example and then I'll go back to that. Web two, we started to be able to, again, engage with that content and then publish that content, i.e. post an image on Instagram, et cetera. Web three is that, but then there's this level of ownership. So let's think about this. You, again, you as an individual, whether you're an influencer or not, are providing immense value to all the technology that you engage with. You provide them data points to inform their UI UX. You provide them content to help them get more eyeballs, to sell more ads. You provide them your user. So ownership means that let's say you were one of the first users of Twitter or Instagram. We can track you because we will get into the identity management part of this later if we want. But by knowing that because you're on the blockchain, you are user number 10 to Instagram, you could have a piece of Instagram in a sense because they would be able to say in the last five years, by being a super user and being user 10, you've bought you brought 500 people to the platform. And so we are going to compensate you for the value you have provided to building this thing. And I think that that is part of like the financial piece of this all. Like that is only one of dozens of financial opportunities. And also just thinking big picture, right? You know, I'm not an influencer. I'm involved in the creator economy and I've worked with influencers. So yes, there are opportunities for creators in terms of like NFTs is a perfect example. The utility part of it, like you were mentioning before, I think is not discussed enough because that I think is the real operative like value, which is again, like provide like with a purchase of an NFT, you can get access to this, access to me, access to a release, a new this, uh, you know, exclusive that, like that all reads very like incredibly valuable and almost sort of an obvious, like, oh, amazing. That would incredibly benefit a creator, like hands down, no brainer. Here's what I want to dive into. And I, this is more for just anyone listening to this who is a woman who wants to have more like financial freedom and you know generational wealth this is what we're talking about for now there are financial opportunities within web 3 that go way beyond anything in terms of like specifically the creator economy yeah you know you talk about like well if you get in early on something it can essentially be the equivalent of owning a piece of like Instagram, basically like a company or organization the size of Instagram or even so much larger than that. Yeah. And I, and, and I want to talk about that because just as women in business, like I want to, I'll speak personally, I want to learn more about crypto so I can invest in it and invest in MFT, NFTs and invest in things and have my money grow so that I can have freedom yeah. to do all of the projects that I want to work on in life and not have to always be concerned and bogged down. I'm like, is this one like profitable yet? Is this profitable yet? Because that for me, I don't know about you, but for me, like that is the 
the fastest way to stress me the fuck out and to like lose all of my creative juices. I want to have revenue streams all over the place to support the projects that I want to do. So look, it's a, it's a big topic and I, but this is sort of what I'm, I personally am excited about. So can we talk a little bit about just like broad, like financial opportunities and what maybe even you're specifically excited about in that capacity? Absolutely. So a few buckets here. One is crypto, cryptocurrencies. This is not financial advice, as I believe I legally need to say, but please do your research on anything and everything. Crypto, the most important thing to note, when we say cryptocurrency, when we say tokens, not all cryptocurrencies are the same. Bitcoin and Ethereum and a Dogecoin have different value and different utility. High level, there's two sides of it. There's ones that are digital currency. That's more of a Bitcoin. And then there's things like Ethereum, which are if you invest, you get a Coinbase account, just like you'd invest in the stock market. Ethereum is a blockchain with applications allowed to build on top of it. So the example I heard yesterday that I loved was if Bitcoin is, you know, an old school Nokia flip phone, Ethereum is a smartphone. So I like to think about it as kind of currency side and technology side. So that's just helpful, I think, as you start to research certain tokens. Right now, the crypto market in general is volatile. So you need to remember that right now, we are, the market's been volatile, but right now prices are a little, they call it the crypto winter. It might, things might be a little rough the next year, but that could be the time to invest because if you believe after you do your research in the things that you are investing in, and it's again, just like the market, like anyone that could ask my advice on investing in the stock market, my investment strategy, and I think this is key as women because we are fucking intuitive witches, is I invest in companies that I think are doing smart things. One of my best investments was Yeti. Why? Because they have a phenomenal product. You know, it was rational thinking. So think does that apply that thinking, I think, to crypto if you want to do this? And I think the best way to dip your toe is one, get Coinbase. That is an exchange. It is safe. It is the most user-friendly. And... They have great educational resources. Look at the ones you've heard of, read about them, and either invest whatever you're comfortable with, $10, $50. That just allows you to have buy-in. If you put $50 in there, you're going to open the app and check on it. And by checking on it, you are going to learn and you're going to monitor it and you're going to get more and more comfortable and educated, et cetera, which hopefully, if you find success and you're interested, will allow you to do more. The other very smart thing to do is what we call dollar cost averaging. And that basically is set it up. So bi-weekly or weekly, you are auto investing and you can set this up with your BOA account or your checking account and Coinbase, $10, $15, et cetera. That one allows it to be a little set it and forget it. And two, it makes it a little bit riskier given that crypto can be volatile because it basically averages out your investment versus saying, I'm going to spend $100 at the peak of the market or the height of the market. The other thing, and this might be a little too deep, but you can set this up again in Coinbase is what we call staking. And that allows you basically to stake your money in a certain crypto, and they then leverage that money. You can't touch it, but you stake $100, and then Ethereum basically uses that $100 to power their network and you gain interest, money, by letting them borrow your money. So that, again, is a little bit deeper, but it's a great way to earn a little bit of passive income. And the interest rates, it's kind of how we used to think about a savings account. Back in the day, our savings account used to earn interest. Now it's like 0.001%, but could be another interesting way to earn some passive income on the side. The other is NFT projects. I need to preface this as well. Most of the NFT projects are in three to five years are gonna be worth zilch. But, and I am deep in the space, I didn't buy my first NFT until probably a month, probably three months ago, because if you're going to buy an NFT, you are investing in one of few things. One, you're investing in the art and the artist. 
you need to remember art is subjective. So that doesn't mean if you buy a piece of, if you buy something and you believe in it, it could be the next Van Gogh. And there doesn't need to be any additional utility behind it. But that's obviously from an investment standpoint, more risky, but only you know if you believe that artist and love that art that much. The other thing is you're investing in the community that is connected to that token and the value that community and that that is per, they're providing back to you. So let's look at a women of the world. Women of the world is the biggest, most blue chip female founded and female artist NFT project. You buy and then you buy into the community, right? And you get that art. And when you get that art, then you become part of their Discord community. And they're doing a whole lot of amazing things to increase the value of that token for their community. Like Reese Witherspoon spoon bought one. Dollar signs increases the value of the project, which increases the value of the token you own. That token also unlocks exclusive events. You go to Art Basel, you just like a ticket, you show your token, I'm a, I'm a wow holder, you can get in, I can't without it. Remember too, now there's, we have the right side of this. So with wow, and this is a, one of the more robust NFT projects, but Shonda Rhimes is now a holder. Back to the royalties part of this. The art of wow is women. They will most definitely, that is IP, if we think about Disney. If you owned Mickey Mouse art back in the day, and then that art was used for all the merch, the amusement parks, et cetera, you would be a, you'd be a millionaire now, right? Because you held an original Mickey Mouse token art and the community that that art and the IP that that art was tied to continued to increase in value. So I invested in, and I'll be completely honest, my best NFT project that I've invested in. It's, I've only invested in female founded projects, not because I'm like, wow, wow, burn your bra, but because, because again, subjectively, I like the art and I gravitate to what their mission is and what they're building. Uh, Crypto Coven, I couldn't remember the name. I minted it, meaning I put it on the blockchain. So that's usually the cheapest that you can buy it at. So I bought it for probably $300, which is not nothing, but it's I'm now getting offers for a little shy of three Ethereum, which is almost $10,000. And I'm not going to sell it, but I've had access to this community. And it's because I did my research on the team. I like the art. I did the research on their roadmap. And every NFT project has a roadmap on their website that will say, when this happens, we will do this. When we hit 10% sales, we'll do this. When we hit 20%, we'll do this. Etc. And we're just seeing the fun get started as far as the value that being part of the right NFT communities and being and owning the right NFTs are providing. And I think as a creator too, I think that's another or someone that has their own business. I would encourage you to dive in a little bit and learn about these NFT projects because they're all powered by that NFT and they have helped me get really creative and better understand all the ways we, potential things we could do. We're living in a creative garden right now, honestly. It's the beginning and I think that, have fun with it. But so that's another investment opportunity, NFTs, crypto. And then this is early days, but I think there is a way to back to ownership and getting paid for your contribution. There are certain ways to get paid for your time. So one company for creators is called Brain Trust, and it more or less is, if you think about any type of freelance network of Fiverr, but you get rewarded based on your contribution. So not only your work, but let's say you brought in your other artist friend into their network of freelancers, you would also get paid for that. So there's additional ways to get compensated for different types of value outside of just a fiver. You, someone asks you to put, you know, do a paid campaign on YouTube and you get paid for that. The last thing is DAOs and it stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. It is very early days. 
don't even worry about knowing the name. I think no one's even going to think about them as that. It's very mismarketed, but more or less, it is being part of an organization or a community, again, where you get compensated for the work you do and you determine, this is the key point, how much you want to work as part of that group or how much time you want to contribute. So an example is meet, there's media DAOs, Bankless is one, Forefront is another, where if as a creator, you join Bankless's DAO and you say, I want to write your newsletter one time a month, you get paid for that content that you created and contributed. But I like that because again, everyone's busy, especially women, and we have a million things going on. And I like the idea of DAOs for a lot of reasons, but I really like that the control is fully on you to say, these are the companies or DAOs, whatever that I like, this is how much time I have, this is what my skills are and I love doing. So I'm gonna tell you what I wanna do, how many hours I wanna give you, and I get compensated accordingly. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think those are the three buckets of how you can currently make money and be capitalizing. And those are fantastic. I mean, one of those concepts are incredibly valuable. And, you know, I've been able to learn a little bit about all of those things. Yeah. And like, it's just, it's really exciting. It's the best way that the way that I think about it, at least is like, people are setting up the foundation for like, the infinite possibilities of opportunity. That is so exciting. So like, if I can implore our audience, anything, it's to just continue to educate yourself and immerse yourself in it. Because it's like with anything, you are only successful as like the people around you. They will absolutely it's all about energy. You feed into that energy. You educate each other. You share information. That's a big piece of this whole thing that I love too, is the community element of the people yeah. who are learning about it and involved in it. You know, everyone's on discord, everyone's on discord and they're sharing information and they're like, you know, you should invest in this and you should invest in this. And if we all do this together, it's going to, we're all going to benefit. It's like those fundamental principles are what really excites me. Yeah. So. I am excited for everyone to hopefully be inspired and by at the very least intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> and, and have fun. Have fun. Have and it's, fun. It's like we're at the beginning of a, of a revolution, literally. And like, that's what, one of the reasons I've loved it the most is my creative brain is just don't assume and then don't make assumptions. Don't think like, oh, I, I'm dumb. I don't get it. No one knows what they are talking about. And that is lean into that. I have been at least. And yeah, I mean, we're all figuring it out together. We're all figuring it out together. I would ask you as like the final piece of our conversation. I don't want today. to end. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say there's so much more to talk about. And we'll continue to for sure. This is the first of many conversations. Can't wait. What do you hope to achieve with Unblocked this year? So um, I hope to more high level. I really just hope to get more people that think they're uninterested, interested and excited in ways that are relevant to them. More tact, tactically. Um, We are in the early, I mentioned this earlier, but I hope to launch our commerce, NFT powered commerce experience by the end of the year. And I hope to really just continue to serve as a container to bring women together to collaborate and collectively build a more equitable future. I too am still learning how to articulate a lot of this. I too, because this is the other thing you have to remember, right? Like this whole world is creating new business models. So it's been interesting trying to be patient with learning myself, learning and figuring out the best ways to put this all together and and build things that will provide the most value and impact. And I'm hoping to continue to figure that out, but really again, back to community and collaboration, to continue to connect with like-minded women like yourself, like outside of this podcast, I can't wait to chat more because 
I know there's so many, the, again, we put our heads together, like, let's fucking go. So I'm excited to lean into that some more. And yeah, just continue to see how, how things evolve. And I'm jazzed more women are getting, to, or joining the conversation. It's so important. Same. And it's I, way more I, fun I, to talk to girls than boys. Just kidding, <laughs> all the boys. And we like the boys too. <laughs> it's, I want there to be more girl clubs. Like I want there to be more women just as excited about the the opportunity, the potential, like that alone and seeing it all come together yeah, and seeing who's getting involved. And like, I don't know, that just like that lights me up. And it's so cool to think about that. It, it really is at its core, um, something that will succeed and do even better when there is collaboration like that is sort of like the fundamental piece of this all so we need your voice we need everyone's voices you know yes absolutely so look i'm so excited to just like continue these conversations i hope we inspired some people you know who are listening or watching today for anyone who wants to check out your organization your company what's the best way for them to to, to learn more and even to get in touch with you. So two things. One, you can, we have so much content that I hope will help you continue on your journey um, on Instagram and YouTube. We also are on Twitter, which is, that's another great place to learn about all of this. That's where the whole kind of crypto web three community resides. I'm not a huge Twitter girl, but you can find us there as well. I also, next week, I'm going to start hosting five off, what I'm calling office hours a week just for any woman, anyone to sign up for, for 30 minutes and ask me any questions on this whole world, just so it can be more personal and kind of relevant to your business and your life. So if you go to Unblock's Instagram, you'll be able to find the link there over the next few days. And I am not joking. I'm always, always down to connect with anyone and everyone and help however I can. So you can feel free to email me directly, Dana, D-A-Y-N-A, at unblocked.com and if it makes sense for us to connect and do some cool stuff together i'd love to hear from you i'm so excited about that we will link all of that in the show notes for sure yeah i'll send you a link to the sessions too my the calendar so it will be there easier perfect it's been such a pleasure connecting with you sister I'm excited to continue these conversations even way beyond this podcast. So for anyone your listening- community is perfect for tokenizing yeah. your community. I, so we got to talk. <laughs> I wanted to say that so that. many times, but I knew this wasn't the time. So, you know, um, but yeah, I look forward to chatting you with some more. Thank you so much. Thank you for all that you do and what you're building and how you're showing up for all of us. We love women like you more than anything. And thanks for having me. Thank <music> you.